السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن نبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله نشهد بأنه قد بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وجعلها على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك فصلى الله تعالى على نبينا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين وعنا معهم بفضلك ومنك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل, محدثة وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد All praises are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We bear witness that there is no deity or divinity worthy of worship but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him Indeed we bear witness that he is the last of messengers and prophets Sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of mankind with the message of peace and justice and brotherhood, the message of compassion and mercy, the message of tawheed, monotheism. Indeed, that is the message of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who follow and live by that message and die on that message. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raise us on the day of judgment with our beloved the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in the Firdaus al-A'la, in the Jannah al-Firdaus. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I like to wish all of you a Eid Mubarak, even though it's belated. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us all the acts of worship that we committed in the days before Eid, in the 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all the Hijjaj, all the pilgrims, Inshallah, make their hajj an acceptable one and all their sins are forgiven. And may they return back safely if they haven't done so yet to be reunited with their loved ones. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make those of us who haven't done hajj perform that beautiful pillar and obligation in the years to come, inshallah. It's always an interesting time and season to go through the seasons of, 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 of Eids for us. Eid is something in Arabic means to repeat. Eid means something that gets repeated. That's why it's Eid. That season is repeated. And all of our ayad, all of our two major, two major holidays and other occasions throughout the year are connected to acts of worship, alhamdulillah. This is the beauty of our religion. You celebrate Eid al-Fitr after 30 days of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the month of Ramadan, we celebrate Eid al-Adha after a season of Hajj for those who are making Hajj and those who are not, they're fasting, they're making Dua, they're making Uthiya, whatever you did in the 10 days. So it is, subhanAllah, always linked to something that makes you, gets you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Eid al-Adha is a specific Eid that connects specifically with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam who is in Islam considered to be the father of Muslims, the forefather of Islam. Also, for the followers of other religions, for those who claim to be Muslim, we say Ibrahim is our forefather. And also for those who claim to be followers of Christianity or Judaism, also claim Ibrahim alayhi salam to be their forefather. And the reason for that is because Ibrahim was the father of Ismail and Ishaq. So for that, he is an important figure for mankind, not just for Muslims. So much for we learn from him. I know in Hajj, we always focus on the story of the Dabiha, the Uthiya, the sacrifice of Ismail. We always talk about Al-Dabih, Ismail Al-Dabih, the Ismail who was just about to be sacrificed, and so many lessons. Today, in the few minutes that I have, I want to focus on other characteristics that we can learn from Ibrahim. And Ibrahim is important because if you look at the Quran itself, you see him mentioned 
63 times. About 63 times in 25 chapters in the Quran. 25 surahs in the Quran mention Sayyidina Ibrahim by name. Not just referring to him. Think about that. Almost a quarter of the Quran, quarter of the chapters, number of surahs, talk about Sayyidina Ibrahim. Because he, he is a very central, central figure for us in Islam. So much that we can learn from him. Ibrahim was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have that level. It's not us because he was mentioned, we say he was mentioned. That makes him who he is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has chosen Sayyidina Ibrahim to be his close beloved friend. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has exalted Ibrahim with his love. Allah has chosen him to give him that special love. Khalil is like when you have a Khalil, a friend, the closest of the friends that you love the most. Someone like you feel so close to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen with his mercy, has chosen Ibrahim to be a re recipient of that special love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also described Sayyidina Ibrahim as an ummah. Because, inna Ibrahim kana ummata. Inna Ibrahim, indeed verily Ibrahim, was an ummah. And you look, what does Allah mean by that? There are many explanations to that, as our scholars explain. He was an ummah with his characteristics, in his faith, in the iman that he carried, in his courage that he carried, in his perseverance, the sabr that he held, the love that he held, the mercy that he had for people. It's like an ummah. You know how an ummah carries, you put the whole ummah? But also he was an ummah because when, you, when the, day of, on the day of judgment, every prophet will be called and will ask, bring your ummah. Let's see how many of them stayed on the, on the path and how many went astray. Show me your ummah. The ummah of Muhammad, may Allah account us among his ummah. Every ummah will show up. Ibrahim himself is an ummah by himself. Ibrahim by himself is an ummah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him that special status. As, as well as we know, from an Islamic perspective, he was a Muslim. He was not, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, was not a Jew, was not a Christian, he was a Muslim. But I'm not here to discuss the theologies in specific. I really want to focus on the characteristics of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim also teaches us an important lesson. And a lesson to avoid nationalism. There's nothing wrong in being proud of who you are, your culture, your ethnicity, your national origin. Alhamdulillah, this is nothing wrong. It's actually a blessing that you have that connection. And that is pride, that's patriotism. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, we say, Suhaib al-Rumi, Bilal al-Habashi, Salman al-Farisi. It's a, a connection. It's a connection to a heritage. But the minute that pride creates walls between you and others, then it's, there's something wrong. The minute that nationalism, that patriotism becomes ugly nationalism, then there's a problem with that. And Ibrahim teaches us that you have, you, you have no borders. Because the land is the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibrahim was born in Iraq, traveled and lived in Palestine, in Khalil, in Hebron. Then he traveled to Mecca, where he left his child and raised his child there, left his child to be born there, to live there, build the Kaaba there. So we see from Ibrahim that openness. You know, all the land belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It does not matter what your national origin, which tribe you belong to. What matters is your humanity and the truth. He fought with his own tribe. He disagreed with his own tribe, his own people, his own father, Ibrahim alayhi salam. But he chose the truth. He didn't say, I'm going to stick to my parent, you know, because family is important. The tribe is important. I'm always with my people no matter what. I'm, always, I'm gonna always stand with my country and my tribe, right or wrong. He didn't say that. I said, I stand for the truth. And when my people, when my country, when my group deviate from truth, my job is to bring them back to the truth, guide them to the truth. And he did that. But we also learned that he did that with mercy. Even when he spoke with his father who was so engaged in the idol worshiping. Ibrahim salam addressed when he spoke to his father, he said, Ya Abati. Oh, my beloved father. He spoke with mercy, with compassion. This is a lesson for us as we deal, when we deal with co-workers, with family members, with classmates, neighbors, who either misunderstand Islam or express hatred towards Islam or ignorance towards Islam. So many of our family members, forget about co-workers and neighbors, you know, even within the same family, you have people who don't know. 
How do you respond to them? You ignorant, you're going to hell? Or say, my beloved cousin, my beloved parent, my beloved brother, let me advise you about what I learned. Correct me if I'm wrong. This, is, this was the style of Ibrahim السلام, when he spoke with his father. He said, I'm worried about you. Maybe shaitan will mislead you. Let me share with you what Allah has blessed me from knowledge. Give me Allah, give me some knowledge. Let me share that with you. He didn't say, I'm smart and you're an idiot. I'm going to Jannah, you're going to hellfire. That style is something we need to learn and remind ourselves. Because this is the sunnah of the Prophet We also learn from him his strength, his iman. When his people rejected his teaching, they want him burned. They put him on the fire, as you all know very well. He didn't change that, you know what, maybe it's time to lay low. Maybe it's time to keep quiet until things change. He said, no, that's my faith. That's what I believe in. I'll do it with wisdom. I'll do it with love, with compassion. But I stick, I hold my ground. I stick to my teachings. They wanted to burn him alive. His answer was very simple. Hasbi Allahu wa na'mal wakil. Allah is sufficient for me as a protector. And indeed, he is the best of protectors. And this is what we learn from that. We learn from him. Even Muhammad وسلم, was instructed and was quoted in the Quran saying the same thing. Many, many centuries after that. Because this is the teachings. And Ibrahim gets the reward for being the first one to initiate that. When you're facing struggles, hardships, don't change your principles. Remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of things. Allah put you in that challenge. Allah put you in the middle of that challenge to see how you're going to act. And Allah can make that challenge disappear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed made that challenge. With the faith of Ibrahim alayhi salam and his strength, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the same fire that was created to burn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered that same fire. قُلْنَا يَا نَارُ كُونِ بَرْدًا وَسَلَامًا عَلَىٰ Ibrahim. Allah says, I order you, O fire, be coolness and peace on Ibrahim. And indeed it became. Allah is the one who makes science. You know, it's not that difficult. I know it's in our heart difficult. How could the same fire that burns becomes coolness? Not, no, notice, Allah did not say, I stopped the fire from being burning. No, no, that's more than that. Allah made the fire becomes like air conditioning, basically. Cooling. Allah created it. Allah made this, the fire burn and Allah can make the fire coolness. Subhanallah. And it did with Ibrahim alayhi salam. Why? Because he said, Hasbunallah wa Because he held his faith, his iman. He didn't compromise because at the, first, at the first challenge that he faced. Life is full of tests. And Ibrahim's life was full of tests. Think about what he had to deal with later on. Imagine, after so many years of waiting to have a child, and then Allah blesses him with a child. And then Allah orders him, don't enjoy the child. Send the child. Allah didn't say, put him in an orphanage so you can keep visiting him. Or didn't say, give him to your neighbors. Give him to, give him to one of your cousins to raise that child. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the toughest of the tests. He said, take your child to the middle of nowhere. To the middle of the desert. There was no cities. No airplanes. No Jeddah airport. No nothing. Nothing. In the middle of nowhere, in Mecca, desert at that time. No Zamzam water, by the way, of course. And he puts him there with his mother, the mother of Ismail, Hajar alayhi salam. And subhanAllah, look at the test Ibrahim had to go through because he had faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah puts test to test us. And then who also passed the test? Hajar. May Allah be pleased with her. Simple question she asked him. Hajar asked Ibrahim because she wanted to know. Because if he's doing things on his own, because he's doing some experiment, she would have been, and rightly so, would have been worried. She asked him a simple question. Was that something ordered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This, this, is this from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Oh, Allahu amaraka bidhalik? His answer was, yes. Allah ordered me to do that. Then, then go. He will not let us down. Allah will not let us down. Look at this iman. Look at this huge, heavy iman that exists in the heart. If this is what Allah wants, then I'm, I'm safe. She's in the middle of the desert, little water, it's about to finish. <coughs> Yet, strong faith. SubhanAllah. May Allah grant us such faith. And indeed, as you all know the story, he survived, she found Zamzam, all the tribes came in, had a deal with them, etc. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reunite Ibrahim with Ismail. And Ibrahim is attached to him now. 
and he's Ismail is a young man is about to become the helper of his father like when you have a child and now you can count and depend on that child what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order them to do? sacrifice your son and the story is well known to you and Ismail and his father passed the test again and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders Ibrahim to take his son and build the Kaaba and this is I want to focus on for a few minutes there because if you think about it Ismail went with his father Ibrahim alayhim salam and they built the Kaaba as the first place of worship in the, on the earth on the face in the first in the earth first masjid first bayt min biyutillah house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he built it and after that what happened a community came out of it from the children the progeny of Ismail came home Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and came what Islam your aqidah your belief your way of life my way of life inshallah Islam came from that came who else you me we are the fruits the fruits of that seed that seed which was Ibrahim's obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ibrahim playing a role Ibrahim accepting to put his son in the middle of the desert that action done by Ibrahim created that tree from which came the fruits Muhammad وسلم, the Quran Hajj Islam Muslims you I our children our aqidah our belief system it's the fruits of that seed that seed that seed is the act of obedience the act of faith the act of perseverance by one man Ibrahim alayhi salam wallahi when you looked at that destiny that happened that destiny was destined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are tools that Allah puts us in but tools with choices Ibrahim alayhi salam had a choice to make he's not an angel he had a choice he could have said I disobey or I obey but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided him to obey and Ibrahim made that choice every day of your life every day of our lives we have a choice to make either to fulfill that destiny that comes after us because when we look at this history you see Ibrahim on top of it and everything comes down based on that action that he did Wallahi ask yourself my dear brothers and sisters what comes after us what is the progeny what are the results of the actions that we that gonna happen based on a certain action you do that action could be do I become a good person or a bad person a good Muslim or a bad Muslim do I make Hajj or don't make Hajj do I marry the right person or I don't marry the right person do I take the job that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take me on the path of continuous obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or take a job that makes me compromise my religion do I become active in the building of our institutions our masajid our community or I choose to be a spectator Ibrahim did not choose to be a spectator Ibrahim could have thought who knows he could have shaitan could have come to him because we know shaitan came try to tempt him what are you doing leaving your children your son and your wife there that's what the rajam happens in hajj right shaitan came to him he tried to tempt him who knows shaitan might have told him why would you do that let somebody else do it and the result of it will come in maybe maybe the progeny of the other guy will build this maybe your son maybe his heart maybe who knows what came to his mind what shaitan tried to tempt him with but Ibrahim held his ground alayhi salatu wasalam are we holding our ground that is the question when we have a choice to be active be part of a community always ask yourself what is my role next when I when I look at the community look at Islam it does not end with me and it's not about what others can do because I always we're always sitting together at gatherings at dinners at events and what do we hear we hear complaints there is no one who likes to complain more than the Muslims subhanallah we sit there Akhi, these organizations are failures those massages don't know what to do those Imams we need to change them those teachings need to be reformed those activists have no clue what they're doing and this and after two hours we feel alhamdulillah I've done my duty for Islam now I can go back and live my life what have you done it is not about what others are doing and it's not about preaching others and it's not about philosophizing about others it's about what you have done when you stand up in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment Allah will ask you Allah said when Islam was being defamed in America 
when some nobody decided to make a movie to insult the Prophet When someone named Pamela Geller, another nobody, decides to describe Islam as uncivilized, or a hateful person like Congressman Alan West say Islam is evil, or a threat to America, or this or that hater or that ignorant person and so on and so forth. When all of these people do this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you on the day of judgment. When my messenger Muhammad وسلم, was wrongly defamed and attacked, what did you do? It's not going to be a good answer to say, Wallahi, alhamdulillah, I heard CARE issued a press release, and I heard MASS held some conference, and I heard this group issued a, a, a brochure, and I heard maybe Irvine Masjid held a halaqa, a class about that. No, no, the question is going to be again, you, you, what have you done? Don't tell me what the others done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, walillahi al-mathal al-a'la. Allah knows best what will happen exactly. But in general, this is what will happen. You and I will be asked, as we know very well. We will be asked about our reaction to the action, about our actions to what is happening. Don't say, alhamdulillah, the Muslim community, because at that matter, it does not, at that time, it doesn't matter. The Muslim community doesn't matter on that day. When we are in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bayna yadayillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, between his hands, Allah will ask you and me about our actions. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who are doing deeds and doing less talks, less complaints, more actions, more result-oriented, more uniting of our community. Wallahi, any time you sit and you feel in a gathering someone likes to talk, that's the time when you know you're wasting your time. Ask that person immediately, what are you doing? Don't sell, tell me this masjid doesn't do, this imam doesn't do, this organization, because these are the people who are like the anchor in a, in a, in a, in a ship. You know how a ship, with the, when the anchor is down, it will never move? These are the people who keep us standing still, because they give us the false impression that we're doing something. When you talk, talk for two hours, and you leave, you go back home, alhamdulillah, I've done my duty. I, I, we, we criticized Pamela Geller, alhamdulillah. We spoke against Islamophobia, and we gave five solutions for the problems of the Ummah around the world. What have you done to make it happen? It's not my job. I philosophize. I analyze. Let the others do the work, subhanAllah. So this is a disease that exists, and inshallah we're going to counter it. Because Ibrahim did not engage in talking. Ibrahim alayhi salam engaged in actions. Ibrahim built the Kaaba. He didn't draw a manuscript about who can build the Kaaba later on. He didn't say, inshallah, when Ismail grows up with his children, they will build it. He was an old man. And he built the Kaaba with the Ismail. This is the attitude we Muslims should have. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who follow this attitude, not the attitude of talks. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru faya fawza mustaghfirin. Ibad Allah, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusallun ala nabi. Ya ayyu al-ladhina aminu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslimu. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad kama sallayta wa sallamta wa barakta ala sayyidina wa habibina Ibrahim fil alamina innaka hamidun majid Allahumma qsim lana min khashyatika ma tahulu bihi baynana wa bayna ma'asiyatik wa min ta'atika ma tubalighuna bihi jannatik wa min al-yaqini ma tuhawinu bihi alayna masaib al-dunya Allahumma matta'na bi asma'ina wa abasarina wa quwatina wa dhurriyatina abadan ma ahyaytana واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا اللهم لا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم واجعل الجنة هي دارنا ومأوانا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم من أراد بالإسلام والمسلمين خيرا فوفقه إلى كل خير ومن أراد بهم شرا وضرا فخذ أخذ عزيز مقتدر يا أرحم الراحمين يا قوي يا عزيز يا ناصر المظلومين يا الله يا الله يا الله اللهم انصر من نصر دين محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم واجعلنا منهم واخذل من خذل دين محمد واخذل من خذل دين محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم ولا تجعلنا منهم يا الله اللهم ارفع البلاء عن إخواننا في كل مكان اللهم ارفع البلاء عن إخواننا في فلسطين وفي كشمير وفي سوريا وفي أفغانستان وفي إيران وفي باكستان وفي الصومال وفي ميانمار وفي كل مكان يا رب العالمين اللهم كن معهم ولا تكن عليهم اللهم من أراد بهم خيرا فوفقوا إلى كل خير ومن أراد بهم سوءا وضرا فخذوا أخذ عزيز مقتدر يا أرحم الراحمين يا قوي يا عزيز 
اللهم أنا خصوا إخواننا في سوريا بالدعاء فتقبل منا اللهم انصر إخواننا في سوريا اللهم تقبل شهداءهم وعافي واشفي مرضاهم وجرحاهم وفك قيد أسراهم وأعد ورد مفقوديهم ومعتقليهم يا رب العالمين اللهم وانصر مظلومهم اللهم وانصر مظلومهم اللهم وعليك بالطاغية الأسد اللهم عليك بالأسد وأعوانه وأزلامه وأنصاره وكل من دافع عنه يا الله اللهم خذهم أخذ عزيز مقتدر اللهم دمر الأرض من تحت أقدامهم اللهم دمر الأرض من تحت أقدامهم اللهم أرنا فيهم يوما أسودا كيوم فرعون ويوم هامان يا الله ويوم, ويوم القذاف ومبارك وبن علي اللهم واجعل هذا عاجلا ولا تجعله آجلا يا قوي يا عزيز يا ناصر المظلومين ويا راحم يا ارحم الراحمين يا الله يا الله عباد الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم واقم الصلاه